Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of K-Pop Hot Takes. I'm back, I'm so sorry I've been gone for a while. I just didn't have inspiration to anything to talk about and I wanted to make sure I spoke about something properly and yes, this is my new background, do we like it? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. So, today I want to talk about a topic which has annoyed me, which has annoyed me for a very long time, um, which stems from the statement, they look like girls. I wanted to discuss how irritating it is because the more I hear it, the more I think of the intention behind such a comment. Um, ironically, I've heard this comment in the negative connotation, usually from women, um, just as much as men at times. Um, and it saddens me a bit as a queer man because why does a man who looks more feminine, wearing makeup, you know, wearing gender neutral clothing, which is not happen masculine, um, seen as a lesser man and I mean to me this just screams misogyny and internalized misogyny when it comes to the women with a touch of homophobia in there because they look like girls is usually the prerequisite to they look gay and that's never said in a positive sense which is just blows my mind in 2021 that people still think like that on top of that like why is femininity seen as a joke and as a weakness we know patriarchy plays a part a woman in a suit is powerful seen as uh, in a positive everything about her is positive but a man in a dress is seen as a joke just like you know a lot of comedians have been seen a lot of male comedians wearing dresses and wearing heels and dressing up as women has been used as such a comedic thing for centuries well i want to say centuries for a very long time decades um in a way that i've not seen a woman dressed as a man used as comedy so I guess that all plays a part, but it doesn't make it okay. And although gender norms are being pushed and redefined in the Western media, you know, with artists such as Lil Nas X, Jaden Smith, um, Kid Cudi, um, Harry Styles, Young Thug, ironically, quite a more, lot more so in the hip hop scene. Um, interestingly, it's not as free as what we've seen, or maybe even the concept that we see as free in the K-pop world when it comes to male idol groups who, like I was mentioning before, is quite open, they're quite open in terms of wearing gender neutral clothing or um, wearing a lot of makeup or certain jewellery or any sort of sheer clothing or mesh or crop tops. I mean, it's just so normalised now um, from what, I, what I've seen in the K-pop world. So, although there's some progress in the West, it's nowhere near as much as what I've seen visually in the K-pop world. And as a queer man, these are the aspects that really actually sold me to K-pop because hypermasculinity is not healthy and it's not fun to consume and there's nothing about it is welcoming and nothing about it feels good. It's not good for anyone. So I don't understand why there's this certain grip and hold onto this is this is what this should be. And it's like, it's not a binary world. Things should, shouldn't stay so binary because there's a lot more to gain by allowing that freedom and allowing those gray areas and, allow, and allowing that exchange and seeing it in others. Which speaking of seeing, in, seeing it in others, it's so ironic that a lot of women are open about the fact that male idols are catered towards women. And I don't know if you lot are familiar with TikTok or not, but there's this new saying on there that says, men who are written by women are a different, are the right kind of men that women actually enjoy. Because for the most part, the men who are hyper masculine are written for other men or other hetero uh, presenting or self claiming straight men. So it's quite it's quite ironic that when they when some people are saying they look like girls or they look gay, but a lot of women still find them attractive because those men don't seem as toxic. They seem comfortable in their femininity. They seem kind and they seem like they um, are respectful. So it's a whole, it's quite funny when you think of, they, they're seen as a demeaning thing that a man is more feminine and these idols are so, why are they so pretty? Why don't they have beards? Why aren't they muscular? When in reality, a lot of women still love that because that doesn't dictate, they are aware that how someone presents doesn't always dictate them their sexuality as well because we know a lot of hyper-masculine men who are doing things on the low. So. I find it like you're just shooting yourself in the foot because you're prelacing this expectation on these men to be so hyper masculine so that you feel assured that oh, I've got a, I've got a real man while well, that real man is looking for other men so now what's this and it just frustrates 
and adds to the level of ignorance because also masculinity is performed in different ways across the planet some cultures I know in South Asian culture it's quite common to hold hands men hold hands in the street they're physically affectionate and it's the norm doesn't mean they're gay doesn't mean they're not it's just the norm in the West, that doesn't really happen. <laughs> so in some ways, some close mindedness happens there in our side as well. We're not as liberal as we think we are. And just like in South Korea, like even then as well, it's quite, they're quite uh, affectionate between each other in what I've seen in a lot of idol groups anyway. I don't know how it is on the actual norm, so I can't speak for what it is on a day to day for actual real life Koreans, but from the idol groups that we see, it's quite normal for guys to say they love each other, for guys to hug, for guys to, um, like even kiss each other on the cheek and for it just to not mean anything because that's just how they do it so it's quite an interesting thing when people are looking at their masculinity with a western lens and going mm, this is a bit and not holding it to the same value when I think there's so much power in the fact that they're comfortable to do that as men between themselves so I just pray it comes to a time when this kind of like stops and ends because it's sexism is just so boring and it's so boring when it's coming from people who are also directly affected by the same views they're forcing and kind of putting on others yeah that's all i had to say for that um and basically i want k-pop to say that i want k-pop to stay like that because i think that's the beauty in it um let men be comfortable and embrace whatever scale of gender expression that they want to express same as women don't even get me started on what they do for the female idols because that's a whole nother video but yeah let me know what you lot's thoughts are i feel like we a lot of us are on the same page and a lot of us hear these comments whenever you show someone a k-pop video the first thing they will say is they look like girls uh, which also when it's coming from the men i'm like does this mean you're kind of finding them finding them attractive and you don't want to admit to that because there's a sense of that as well there's a sense of like no he looks beautiful but it's like also if you're comfortable enough you can compliment other men who are beautiful without your orientation being affected you know and what if you are a little bit bi most people are that's okay too like that's just where i stand i hope you enjoyed this i'm gonna be back with more videos now um we're back we're back baby i hope you like my, i love my i'm obsessed with this Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. I'll see you all next time. I try to not, yeah. Bye!